Hey guys, good evening. So I apologize. Uh, YouTube has already warned me that the current bitrate is a bit lower than recommended for streaming. I, I apologize for that. Sometimes that happens. So we are going to be painting this hydrangea illustration here. Let me grab the reference for you guys. I've already shared the um, how to draw tutorial. So if you've never drawn a hydrangea before and you're interested, I'm sorry, hyacinth. I don't mean hydrangea. I mean hyacinth. Hydrangea is next week. Um, but if you've never drawn a hyacinth before, hopefully this tutorial will help you out. I apologize that we're running a little bit late. There's actually a tropical storm out in the Gulf and that just kind of slows everything down just a smidge. Everything takes a little bit longer. And um, I was helping my mom with something and I got just completely soaking wet going to and from the car. So I appreciate your patience. I'm glad you guys could make it here tonight. Now I know dry times tonight are going to be even slower than normal. So um, I've already turned my fan on. I've already got my dehumidifier going at full blast. And um, hopefully the, oh, thank you. The, uh, yeah, I was actually um, having trouble with XSplit toasting, as you guys can see, and I just couldn't get it to go away tonight. I'm having computer issues, so I'm just going to roll with it and do the best that I can. Um, let me pop out the chat, and I will get the reference up in the video in a second. There we go. All right. So hopefully you guys have been having a good week. It's It's been a hectic one here. So for tonight's workshop, I am using my Daily Driver watercolor palette. So like I say every week, it is a collection of all the paints I've tried and loved. So if you're interested in finding your new favorite watercolors, I have a boatload of watercolor reviews here on the channel that you guys might find helpful. I also have a bunch of watercolor tutorials here on the channel as well. And looking at my video, it is all blown out. Fix that, there we go. No, no, um, I'm, I'm dual recording. So the uh, secondary camera looks, looks pretty bad. Hey, Tolly, good evening. I hope you guys have had a good week so far, feels like summer is officially here, especially here in Louisiana where summer often means hurricane season. So I'm gonna start by blocking in some of the colors. So I have a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm also gonna grab just a little bit of dioxine purple since as we can see in our reference, it's kind of a purplish blue. And I'm also going to grab a little bit of this cooler yellow. It might be bismuth yellow. I'm going to start out by painting what I can see of the stem. So in my inked illustration here, I made sure to not just fill this in completely with blossoms, but to show some of the stem. And I want to make sure I capture that. Also want to say if you guys ever miss any of these live streams, they're always available to watch after the fact. I know it's not as fun as hanging out, but hopefully it kind of makes up for missing it. Oh, uh, is the music playing? It is not playing. Let me fix that. Sorry about that. I wish I could just push a button and have my desk clear itself off, the camera switch to the correct ca camera, the webcam, OBS open, like I wish, oh, and all my, all the links go out, all the promotion go out. I wish there was like one button I could push and it would do that for me. I'm sure somebody's got like a Raspberry Pi or something to facilitate that and maybe I should look into it because it does take about 15 minutes to get set up. 
you know what? While I'm thinking about it, I could go ahead and mask off my area with masking tape. Torching in Houston, so humid. Oh yeah, I bet, especially with the tropical storm going on. Y'all are probably catching some of that humidity. So, <laughs> Sailor Moon washi tape, but it doesn't really matter. Any low tack washi tape will do masking tape will work for this. I'm gonna remove a little bit of the additional adhesion. Line it up with my illustration. Get rid of that, that's not important. This way, when I'm ready to decide on whatever my background's going to be, it's ready for me. And with the fan on, things are drying pretty quick, so that's good. I always feel bad when we're painting together and it's just like waiting for paint to dry, waiting for paint to dry. So I'm gonna go in with a slightly thicker mix of that yellow and I'm trying to follow the motion of the leaves here. I find letting my brush do a lot of the work results in a better illustration. And that's something I used to, I mean, it's something I still have to remind myself not to do color by numbers, just sort of block fills, but to try to go with the contour of whatever I'm painting. Also, I'm going to fill some of this in, even though I hadn't drawn it in, I think I do want it to be like green leaves behind the plant, kind of fill those areas in a bit. It's rendering a window, like a floor window. Yeah, I, it, it popped up the, um, sorry about that y'all, it, it for pass decided to reconnect to the computer randomly. Sure. And uh, even though I clicked it away, I guess it still kept the focus that it had stolen. So I'm sorry about that. And then I think I'm going to grab a little bit of a cool glue. So almost like a phthalo, probably not actually a phthalo, probably more like a marine blue or um, just something like that, a cooler blue, maybe a phthalo blue. I think I just said that. Sorry. <laughs> and this gives us a really nice fresh green. Even though this is still wet, I'm going to start brushing it in there. And we're still working in the Blick Studio watercolor sketchbook. So as with the past three workshops, it is a cellulose-based watercolor paper. Since I've talked about the flaws of, well, the quirks of working with cellulose paper, in depth in the past. I'm not really going to go into it too much on a night like tonight when it's been raining off and on, all more on than off all day. It's definitely going to be a little more challenging, but that's all right. And I went ahead and I clipped my paper down just to kind of help prevent it from buckling. Yeah, and from blowing away. That's right, I've got the, the tornado going. I 
So one thing I'm really excited about this week is we recently finally purchased the Legend of Zelda expansion content for Breath of the Wild. And I'm really excited about that because I love Breath of the Wild. It's one of my favorite games. All right, so while I'm, I'm letting this dry a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and finally take the opportunity to let people know that the stream is live. Oh, it's okay. It's, it's a little bit of a challenge to get everything going. So I'll turn on virtual desktop for the time being. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I definitely need to restart this computer. It's being very slow. Oh yeah, Facebook's not gonna let me do that, I forgot. Share it to Facebook, I mean. It's been a long day. So if I end up falling ASMRing myself and falling asleep, you'll have to forgive me. Like yeah, like the kitten, he was so tired. Well, at least having the fan on helps with those ding ding dry times. And the AC and the dehumidifier. All right, stream has now been promoted. Turn the virtual desktop back on. Hey, Feather, good evening. Thank you. How'd the comic stream go earlier today? I'm sorry I missed it, we were out and uh, I did not have internet connection where we were at. All right, so I added a bit more of that cooler blue. And it's not gonna dry as blue as it appears here, but it is gonna give it a nice glaze. Oh, for Art Squad. Um, so for those of you guys who don't know, every other Thursday of the month, I co-run an art club, art workshop kind of thing for tweens in St. Charles Parish, Louisiana. And uh, last Thursday, my co-host Sarah put together kind of like a cryptid bingo 
where uh, so everybody gets like a packet of goodies often it's art supplies this time it was art supplies and then also um that bingo board like a laminated bingo sheet with different cryptid attributes and a six-sided dice and then some templates for like um like kind of like magic the gathering or trading card playing cards and we all took turns rolling and drawing our own cryptid it went over really well it seemed like everybody had a lot of fun That's the problem with good ideas is it's sometimes tempting to like uh, do them over and over again and just like vary them a little bit. Because I was just thinking, oh, that would be, I think, I think it could be done like for mermaid and stuff. Um, so sporadically, you know, if you did it six times a year, I don't think anybody would complain. But if you did it all the time. it would start to get kind of, maybe they would start finding it repetitive. I always like those random character genera generators though, because it always kind of, I wouldn't necessarily think to draw. So as like an artist tool for improvement. Yeah, it's like a creativity enhancer. Yeah. You sketched two pages, that's awesome. <laughs> I feel like our brains are built along the same lines. I love um, collections of things. So I will just draw like iterations of the same kind of things over and over again, whether it's like food or plants. And then I don't know what to do with them after. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. A very, very specific kind of trading card. Well, the, unfortunately, the way these are laid out, they're not going to make, they wouldn't make nice prints. For, some of them, maybe, but they, they, they're all a little cramped and cut off to make nice prints. They put a border? Maybe. Kind of yeah, maybe. Oh, you, maybe. I'm saying like, and embellish the frame. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like it would make them look even more kind of cramped, but uh, I'd have to play with it. Maybe do a washi tape with them. So really, I could have done it either way. I could have gone in and done the flowers first and then done the leaves and the stems. Oh, the red cap thing. So these are to um, facilitate me like hanging them to dry. You know how with like uh, Chinese watercolor brushes and Sumi watercolor brushes, they'll have like a loop at the end because they're meant to dry hanging down so that the point dries to a point. Well, with Western watercolor, they don't do that. And you, you end up with brushes that you're drawing like right this way up and then they belly out and they splay out. So somebody invented this thing that has these like wiggly arms and you put these red caps on your brushes and then you kind of like hang this ridiculous little Smurfs cap into the wiggly arms so it can dry pointing down. I actually really like it. I ended up buying additional arms and an additional set of caps because I have too many brushes. It doesn't work super well though on like the really small brushes because the caps aren't really tight enough on there to prevent it from falling off. You didn't buy it from Amazon, did you? No, I got it on Blick. Go for it.
So earlier on, I did a really light mix of ultramarine blue with a little bit of purple so that we get this like really light blue violet color. So what I'm doing right now is I'm basically, oh, I should be smart and do it wet into wet. Oh, but that would be so time consuming. <laughs> All right, well, what I'll do is I'll do this first as like a base to just kind of block in our flowers. And then I'll go in and try to do it wet into wet. Pedal by pedal by pedal by pedal. But this is what I mean when I refer to my own work as like coloring book kind of coloring. I'm not necessarily thinking with my brush. I'm just like kind of mindlessly for me just filling in the color. And that can work sometimes. But I've really been trying to be a bit more strategic in general with using brushwork and having like clean, defined brush strokes. And that's just kind of a, a personal peeve of my own with my own work is when it starts looking just a little too like I just filled in areas rather than thinking strategically about how I'm applying that color. Now that said, I don't really mind if this really wet application of color reactivates some of the color and it kind of blends into it. In fact, I'd actually kind of like to encourage that, but I think there isn't enough yellow or phthalo on here to really move a whole lot. No. One of the problems with just kind of like mindlessly filling the color is that it can sometimes just glob onto the paper in ways you don't want it to. And while that's not the worst thing in the world, it's, it's still a little frustrating and it can make water control a little bit harder, especially on more temperamental papers like a cellulose paper on a wet day. In fact, that's one of the reasons I in general, I'm not the biggest fan of synthetics is that they do tend to just kind of glob the water. I can use rubber bands and hooks. That is a good idea. So what I think I'm going to do, I want to catch it while it's still wet and I'm probably not going to, which is a bit, a little bit disappointing. I'm gonna dab in some of that phthalo so I can get a little bit of uh, more interesting, I guess, color. And then since some, out, some areas have already dried and then some are still wet, I'm gonna go ahead and spritz it and really just increase that dry time. Spritz it with some clean water. So glad you can make it feather if you have any specific uh questions about color mixing let me know in the paint box and i'll do my best to help you out but a lot of it is just gonna kind of be dependent on what paper you're using and what color palette you're using and just practicing with it a lot um, but i can also recommend some exercises that i found helped me get a better grip of color mixing but as you as you can see i have like a really big palette that i work from and i find that easier for me than working from like a 12 color palette so it's really gonna kind of vary by artist but anyway have a good evening yes stay hydrated not that thai tea counts as hydration
That's true. Drying racks are pretty expensive. My rationale, though, is for things like that, I do tend to use them for a really long time, like 10 plus years. All right, so while this is still wet, really want to get some yellow in there, too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with applying it to the leaves. And you can see I'm actually lifting up some prior colors. So something I need to keep in mind while I'm painting this tonight on a super humid night is that the colors are going to be really prone to reactivating, to relifting. So I might want to keep this illustration looser because looser illustrations tend to, it looks better if it, if it lifts, if it reactivates, that kind of thing. but this is gonna kind of encourage some of that yellow, hopefully to run into some of these flowers. And if that doesn't work, I can always sprinkle a little bit in, just so we get some interesting colors. See that rose? That rose gave me too many ideas, wild ideas. So unfortunately now we're just waiting on paint to dry which given the humidity outside is probably going to take a little while. So speaking of hydration, what are y'all's favorite non-caffeinated teas? Because I find that in the evening, um, sipping on a nice hot non-caffeinated tea is a great way for me to remember to stay hydrated. Um, I really like mint teas, especially if I've eaten something kind of heavy for dinner, but um, ginger teas are also very good. And, you know, chamomile tea is great when you're ready to finally start winding down and going to sleep. Yeah, I can really see how the color has just, it never really made it into the page. It just sat on the surface of the page. Oh, there is a little bit in my hydrangea. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clean that up. It doesn't really bother me, but it'll make it easier to do next week's tutorial. Oh, dry times. The bane of every impatient person's existence. Nice cold handmade lemonade. Yeah, that does sound pretty refreshing. Especially on a really hot day, but not too sweet because then you start feeling dehydrated. Are you reading a mini comic? Ooh, ooh, I'm waiting on this to dry. Come here, come here. All right, show the, the fine people what you're reading. And what is this about? Uh, so Land of Eam is the world of Rickety Stitch. Sorry, okay, I'm trying to save um, Ooh, that's really well printed. It's got like a really nice velvet touch cover. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so this is a Rickety and Stitch yeah. comic? That's cool. Well, it's not a Rickety and Stitch comic. It's not even a comic. It's a... Uh, what? It kind of looks like Lilliputian Living, where you've got prompts and you've got illustrations. A bit, except this is more directly intended to role, role play. role play. That's so cool. It doesn't necessarily have a rigid role play system. Uh, there's some general uh, rules, The printing I guess on this is really them. nice. Yeah, it is pretty nice. Uh, and essentially, you either run into battles of pun-based enemies, alligator, or, or antichorus. You have to. Um, oh, that's not right. Uh, solve riddle, pun-based riddles. Oh, that's cool. So this could be a great addition for like a game master to bring into play, especially yeah, if they're I think looking. It's like you would probably have fun with it for you know two hours, maybe two to three times with your friends. And I mean, 
it's just a, a small campaign kind of thing, essentially. That's pun focused and so, in the, the world of Eam. Who's the creator? Uh, it is. Wow. Ben Costa? Yeah, Ben Costa. And I can't think of the writer's name off the top of my head. So I've met Ben a few times at conventions. I didn't buy this from him at convention, though. He was running Kickstarter, so I just bought it off that. That's cool. Shoot, once a week, I ought to have you show whatever mini comic you're reading. That's a great way to help other small creators. And it gives us something kind of cool to talk about while we are literally watching paint dry. Would you recommend it to people who enjoy tabletop gaming? Uh, I like it. I haven't played it. Um, I'm not sure if I will play it, mm -hmm. but I figured I would just read it just for fun. Yeah. Uh, so this is what sold me on it. This was one of my favorites, the one on the right. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can show this, oh, but it's like, strong language, but it's pretty cute. I just want to, I just want to adopt that sword. That's cute. So, um, we have a friend who frequently is a GM. Would you recommend that to him? Uh, yeah, he li he, he likes puns, so it could be a good fit. Uh, thank you for sharing it with us while we wait for paint dry. I do like all the color movement that we're starting to get with this, though. It really helps kind of lighten things up and make things feel a little bit fresher and a little bit more lively and less static. Oh, but there's some there's some sitting water on here. So even if it's gonna mess up the color, I'm gonna use a thirsty brush and just kind of try to move or absorb some of that water. Because that's gonna help with the dry time too. So you wanna you wanna modify that to have a heated top? A heated top. I mean that well, first off in the winter when I'm like leaning on the desk, it actually used to make my arthritis really bad in Nashville. Hmm. So on that note, that would actually be kind of helpful. Hmm. I need to decide what background color I want to do for the hydrangea. Ask the chat. Ask the chat. I'm thinking yellow. What about you guys? Or maybe like this, this at this point, kind of yellow green. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Always good to get a second opinion, especially if it's somebody who enjoys your work. Although if the other two are going to be light background. Oh, I have no idea. I decide it as I go. Yeah. So. Well, it would look way too top heavy if all three of the bottom ones were light background. Oh, that's a good point. See, I'm not even thinking of these as like a set. And that might be part of the problem. I'm thinking of these as just a collection of examples of how to draw and how to paint individual flowers. So I'm treating this like a sketchbook and not like a finished illustration. So these, this is still really wet. That doesn't... Do a paint background. I've been trying to stay away from... I've been trying to keep it more natural colors. So yellows, greens, blues. There is. I meant for backgrounds though, like foliage. So depending on the plant, if it's a plant that already has pink flowers or reddish flowers, I would like definitely, the like the bubblegum plant, I would go with that, but you don't. But I don't get, I don't mind if I get some color movement because I am going to tighten some of these areas up quite a bit. See, normally I don't want a hair dryer when anywhere near my art, but it is so wet out there that I know we could be here an hour just waiting for the paint to dry. Yeah. Oh, we did. Yes. And it's got some catching up to do. So last weekend, Joseph and I did something that was actually pretty fun. Oh, thank you, Inuxia. Um, So we've had one of the Nintendo Labo kits 
sitting around waiting to be assembled forever. It's the vehicles kit, which comes with like a steering wheel, a gas pedal, uh, a pilot stick, and a submarine. Uh, I don't know what one would call it a steering wheel or, or what, but anyway, we thought it looked cool from the get go, but we kind of put off putting it together because as you get older, as I know many of you guys know, like you still like doing fun stuff, but you have like a million excuses for why you don't deserve to do fun things and, um, or you don't have time to do fun things. So we finally did the pedal. We, <laughs> we haven't made that much progress. I would say if you're doing the Labo kits, each individual project probably takes like about an hour maybe to do. And I think we both really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, it was a really neat way to learn more about paper construction because it's all made from cardboard. So if you're interested in like cut paper or paper crafts, the Labos are actually a pretty cool way to experiment with that. It would be great to do with um, a kid, but even if you're an adult, it's pretty fun. All right, so I'm grabbing some more of that cool yellow and just in some areas while it's hopefully still wet, I'm gonna block in a little bit more than in other areas and that's gonna hopefully give us like some diffused modeling. And I also really like how the watercolor in some areas kind of bloomed out into the background. But other than that, we've mostly been helping my family take care of their kitten and doing house stuff. We tried to go play bocce in Metairie uh, as like a Father's Day thing with Joseph's dad. But unfortunately, that particular bocce club, in their advertisements, they said that like Tuesdays and Thursdays or Thursdays and Wednesdays were like anybody could come play. Apparently, that's like every other Thursday. And they didn't make that clear in any of the information. And they didn't have it on any of the signs outside. So we didn't actually get a chance to play, but I think we're hoping next week we can do it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into that cool phthalo blue-esque color. And I'm just dabbing some here and there feel a little bit bad because it is so humid. This is going to take so long to dry. Normally, if I were doing this as a tutorial, I would just go ahead and pause it and like go get some dinner or I don't know, read a book or something for a while because I know it's going to take a while. Since we're doing this live, I can't really do that. So I'm going to do my best to keep things moving along. But I did want to point that out if you are, you know, painting along or you're using this to kind of practice different watercolor techniques that me pushing through with as wet as it is right now is not really the ideal way to do this. I mean, we might get something good out of it, but I think that might be in spite of bad, uh, Bad choices, not because of bad choices. What is the red thing on the end of the brush? It's not a stupid question. I know it looks kind of weird. So these are caps for, um, so I recently bought this brush hanging system. And if you give me a sec, I'll kind of demonstrate what these things do. But it's basically this thing that can clamp onto your desk and it's got these wiggly arms that come out of it and you can hang your brushes from those wiggly arms. And that allows them to dry brush in down so that you don't end up with like puffy foxtail looking brushes, which I know that sounds kind of cute, but that's like really bad for your brush health and it's a good way to ruin expensive brushes. So a lot of Asian brushes have like that loop at the end 
and you can hang them brushing down and that allows the brushes to dry to a point and that's really better for the brush health and the brush shape but a lot of western made brushes or brushes kind of designed to emulate western brushes don't have that and so we'll dry them with the brush end up and they end up ruined pretty quickly so I bought this system it was a little bit expensive for what it actually does earlier in the chat Dawn pointed out that you could actually make your own very cheaply for with like clips and uh, rubber bands or tape and rubber bands something like that um, and that's a great idea it does take more time and uh, <laughs> I do tend to be a little bit lazy about these kind of things. But anyway, so what I bought comes with these like wavy arms that you can put into a base. And then it comes with these little red silicone caps that are meant to fit over the ends of your brushes. And then you can hang your brush in the wavy arm part so that it can dry brush down. And that way it'll dry to a point instead of like drying brush up and then the bristles kind of splay out over time. That's not at all a stupid question because it is kind of, it looks like a little smurf cap. It is, well, yeah, and I wish more brushes would come with something like that. That would be really thoughtful design. Maybe they figure they can sell us more brushes if we ruin them quickly. I don't know. Now you can buy just the caps. So if you have something that could hold on to it, that would, you know, you could just get the caps. But something that might be more flexible is just like taping a loop of like um, rubber band to it or something. Ah, I got kind of dark with these. So I'm going to use some of our cool yellow, our bismuth yellow, and start brushing that in. And that's one of the things I love about watercolor is like, how much the color can transform as you layer it. And I mean, yes, we all know, or most of us know that blue and yellow means green, but seeing what kind of greens you can get by mixing different blues and different yellows is one of the things that makes painting really kind of exciting. Joseph, you were saying you have the Chip and Dale's song, Stuck no, Rescue no Rangers song. No, no. Wait, wait, wait. No, now I have the Chip and Dale song because any day like today where it's really wet outside, my brain, instead of sometimes some crimes, my brain is like sometimes dry times are taking just too long. Hmm. Very innovative. I've never seen anything, have never seen it before to be honest. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, Joseph talked me into it when I saw it at the store. I was like, oh, $40, that's kind of expensive. And he was like, I don't know. That seems like something that would be useful to you. And I think he meant I could copy it. But like I said, no, I'm, I'm kind of lazy. I meant you could buy it. Well, I'm, I'm happy with it so far. It's in the spare bathroom that has the dehumidifier. So it's not in the way, but it's right by the sink where I wash all my brushes. And, um, it just has worked out really good. So I normally store my brushes in cups. So it's already working out a lot better than the system I had going. So I know this is gonna take a while to dry. So now would be a great time to take a break, get some water, get a snack, go to the bathroom, do some hand stretches. I am going to refresh my water cup. Usually I would say paint with two cups of water, one clean, one dirty. Um, I don't have a lot of space on my desk, so I don't, but I, I recommend that. Um, I'm going to go switch out my water cup and take a, I'm hoping five minutes will be enough for this to dry enough that we can move on to the next one. 
Dawn says that she usually uses paper clips at the end of brushes. Yeah, and if you had like um, nails or hooks in the wall, you could very easily just hook it on like that. So there's a bunch of cool ways that you can kind of rig up your own system. Um, this, this is just like a good lazy system. I happen to like it. All right, so I'm going to take a five minute break. Um, the, away, the away thing is still out of date. It promotes the Kickstarter, which was last year. But uh, I shall be back soon.
sorry. Collecting vintage watercolor is a rabbit hole I wouldn't like to enter. It is definitely, it, for me, that would definitely be a rabbit hole. I would definitely. You've already started with the paper or whatever. I, with the Neptune, yeah. Although you not used it yet. No, and the difference with the Neptune is that it is like colored paper. So like in my head, it's like, okay, well, that's like a limited sort of thing. And it's also not that vintage. Um, it's older for sure, but it's not like 30 years older. Um, I feel like vintage watercolor paper would probably have a high fail rate. The paints from that. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you're correct about that. All right, so I have a Looser, less saturated, more watery wash of ultramarine blue and uh, dioxine purple here. And then I have the same thing, but more saturated here because I want to go flower to flower and try to get, we'll see how, how uh, successful I am, but try to do like some wet into wet. So wish me luck because this is, from uh, on this paper, on a wet night like tonight, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. That is because you have self-restraint, Dawn. I do not. I think it would start with one. I think I would, I could maybe pass it by my manager, <clears throat> my husband. Um, if I had like a list of paints that I was like, I am specifically curious about Windsor and Newton, um, maybe 80s Holbein, you know, if like I could present like, this is not a forever thing. I'm not going to buy this indefinitely. These are the ones I'm interested in. But it would definitely, I think, become a rabbit hole for me because that's something I'm also interested in, especially how some companies um, used to do their hat pans in ceramic, which I think sounds really cool. I tend to reuse my hat, my old half pans as well. Um, but I, it also sounds very prone to breaking for somebody like me. I mean, if it's like a honey-based watercolor, and it's not fugitive, like light fugitive pigments, I could see it actually lasting a really long time. Aren't there like, didn't they uncover, like archeologists uncover some Egyptian paints that were in one of the Pharaoh's, one of a Pharaoh's tombs and they were able to reactivate them? Were there anime drawings in there? I mean, it really kind of depends on, uh, Hey, did you see that article about how cave paintings are not view the way we view cave paintings isn't how they were intended to be viewed and that the best way to look at them is under like flickering light because the way many of them are drawn, particularly the ones in those French caves, they actually kind of animate. No. Oh, I need to dig that up and send it to you. It was really cool. And then when I saw how few views the video demonstrating that got, I was really bummed out because it's like, that's like a legitimately really cool thing that we all have some shared tie to since that, you know, we're, we're human and this is like how humans used to communicate or one of the ways they would communicate. I'll dig it up and share it with you. Um, maybe next time I'm taking like a mini break, I'll try to find that. But I was just thinking, I wonder if like Pharaoh's tombs are really meant to be like, I always thought of them as like a sequential art. Crayola paints. Huh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get caught up. Okay. Was the vintage sample Crayola? Or was the vintage, or was the Sam, sorry, was the vintage paint Crayola, or was that the Yinmin Blue you bought? Or did you get Yinmin Blue from Crayola? Because I, I'm like, I'm kind of interested in the vintage Crayola, although realistically by vintage, it's probably from when I was a kid, which doesn't feel so vintage to me. Um, or 
if it's if it's Crayola Yinmin Blue, that would be really kind of interesting. I know in some of the articles I read, um, they were talking about wanting to use Yinmin Blue in the production of Blutiful. That's the the blue that they introduced recently. That's apparently supposed to be kind of like a Yinmin Blue. And that they're they're just kind of waiting on EPA certification before they actually start including Yinmin in it. But considering it uses yttrium, and that's a rare earth mineral, to me that seems like a bit of a waste of yttrium to put it in crayons. I mean, frankly, doing it long term in watercolor also seems like kind of a waste. Ooh, see, it's pretty, but I lost a lot of the, like, distinct wet into wet. Let's see if I can, ooh, that's very purple. Recapture some of that. Hopefully so. Thank you. It's a nice uh, ultramarine blue with a little dioxine violet is an, always a nice mix. Honestly, painting so many flowers has helped me really improve my color mixing abilities because I'm working from reference. So I'm assessing something that exists and trying to match it, but it's also something I enjoy and find um, relaxing to do. Maybe after you paint a set of flowers, you can paint a set of pollinators. You know what? That would be fun. Especially because some, there are some insect pollinators that people don't think about as pollen. Like wasps are apparently, yeah, well, I knew about caterpillars, but like slugs are pollinators. Although I think, I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it, even though caterpillars scare me, but I'll do it. But um, it would that would certainly be a very unique audience. And Dawn said, I bought vintage Crayola from 1953 and just bought Yinmin Blue watercolor paint, but I'm waiting for the Yinmin Blue to ship. Okay, I got you now. I think that was just wishful thinking on my part that Crayola was doing like, I don't know, some like artist edition of Yinmin Blue. I, I, I don't even know why I want that, but I do. <laughs> On that note though, none of the blues I'm using tonight are Yinmin Blue. I am planning on doing a field test with the Yinmin Blue and I've definitely got something in mind. And Kabocha was talking about how much she enjoyed that chat stream. So we are talking about doing future ones. The part of the problem is just, you know, spoons. Um, we're both kind of in the middle of doing different things and it can be a little harder to coordinate, but I hope we can make that work. I had a really good time doing that stream. I mean, part of the reason I do YouTube stuff is I do feel lonely sometimes, you know, and um, making things that are intended to share with other people helps me feel less lonely. So it makes sense that like having a podcast like stream would be really satisfying for me. Oh, so this is going kind of dark. I kind of don't mind it though, and I can always use some white gouache to add in some highlights again.
I do think yellow with all this blue, well, it kind of looks like morning, you know what I mean? Like the sun's just coming up and it's still that like light yellow, sort of early morning sunlight. Joseph, what time did you have, you used to have to get up to go to school? What was the earliest? Probably like 5.50. 5.50? Oh, man. Was that high school? Uh, yeah, maybe high school. Yeah. I mean, I had to get up early for college, too, so I wanted to miss Oh, yeah, because you had that long commute. I used to get up at 5.30, but it's because I would... Uh, for for high school and middle school, but it's because I like to take a bath. They help me wake up more. Yeah. 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 So you were probably five fifty was probably like you pushing it as late as possible. I was just thinking about like early morning light and how the sun would look, honestly, most mornings that early here in Louisiana, it's, it's still kind of gray. It's still kind of wet. Um, but there were some mornings where it was just so clear and so beautiful. And, you know, you're standing out there waiting for the bus. And part of you is like, it's a shame I have to go to school because I, it's such a beautiful day. Even when I was teaching at um, private and public schools, I always kind of felt like that. Um, even for the students, like, it's kind of a shame that they have to be inside today because it's such a beautiful day. And honestly... When you're an adult, you don't you don't really get that either. You know, you can't just take off whenever. I would always try to. You get up at four a.m. to go to work. Ooh, and you you work late too. Like you work long shifts. You must be so tired when you get home. It's amazing that you can get home and find the energy to draw. Like really impressive. I have a lot of respect for people who work full-time day jobs and then they go home and they find energy and time to still draw that takes a, a tremendous amount of dedication So for some of these areas, I want to go back and I want to do a darker color, but I do want to let this layer dry first so that it doesn't just completely blend out and we lose all of that. Even doing wet into wet, there's so much color movement that we're kind of losing a lot of that. But we are maintaining it in some areas too. And part of that is just it's a really wet night tonight, so water control is more challenging when... <laughs> when the sky has decided to open up. But I think it's important to talk about that too because there are watercolor artists who do live in these kind of humid, wetter environments and it doesn't mean we don't love to paint and it doesn't mean we can shut, we shut down for like half the year. We just have to learn ways to control the water and control the humidity as much as possible. And sometimes that just means more patience. And somebody asked earlier, what kind of snacks we got? Um, I'm definitely a big snack person. So we still have some of the stuff from uh, earlier this month's Sakurako box. So there's still like a Taiyaki matcha snack in there and like some other matcha stuff. Dawn says, I'm homesick right now uh, due to my ATC ligament. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, on the one hand, you get some downtime, some relaxation time. But on the other hand, 
you got a torn ligament it's not not so fun we also have um so we have this really nice asian grocery store about 30 minutes away and so we have these turtle snacks we picked up they're like lime and chili and those are pretty pretty dang addictive they're super crunchy and when i took that five minute break i fixed us a couple of mugs of ginger tea Trying so hard to not just like turn it to mush because everything's very wet. Oh, and your ankle. Oh, so you can draw. Just means you got to stay off your feet. I mean, not that ever having like an injury is good, but there are definitely some injuries that curtail your life more than others. And um, having one that doesn't stop you from being able to draw or paint definitely makes it a little more bearable because you can entertain yourself with that. <sighs> so something I'm kind of thinking about doing, but I'm just still thinking about it, right? So it takes me forever to decide to do something. Um, but something I was kind of thinking about and mulling over in my head is getting another microphone and <laughs> doing some art and art supply ASMR. <laughs> um, more for fun than for anything. And also because I find like watching other people do a portrait very relaxing, but some of the some of the ASMR artists, while like I love their makeup tutorials and stuff, when they're doing portraits and they do stuff that's just like, that's not how you use that material, like, like just really off, it always jolts me out of my relaxed state. And I was thinking it might be relaxing for others as well as myself to have some like nice art supply holy. Uh, do I live in a rural area where there's a lot of trees, birds, and lizards? Um, it's, it's definitely suburban to rural, but yes, there's lots of trees, birds, and lizards. And that's something I really like about being out here. Our backyard is full of birds and squirrels. And my kitchen is apparently full of lizards because there was a small baby gecko I was trying to chase out while I was fixing tea. Mostly because Bowie will eat him. I'm gonna put some of my blue, start filling in some of these areas. And I'm not trying to fill the whole thing in. I'm also gonna dab some of the more saturated colors in and kind of let them blend. It is hot, so south of the Gulf of Mexico. Hot and humid is a, a rough combination because it's like you're, you don't, your body can't, has difficulty like dumping that excess heat so you can actually cool down because no matter how much you sweat, it's the, the sweat doesn't evaporate, it just sits on you so your body can't really cool down well.
swamp and industry. Yeah. Yup. 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 And there's some just really beautiful swamp. Like every time we're driving to get to New Orleans, I'm always like, look at the swamp. It's so beautiful. It's full of cypress trees. And um, earlier this year, it was full of blooming Louisiana irises. So you would see these like brilliant purple irises as you're going over the bridge. And, and then after the purple ones kind of finished their season, the yellow ones were, I mean, yeah, the yellow ones were blooming for a while and that was really beautiful as well. Okay, so I mixed some more, speaking of, of purple, I mixed some more ultramarine blue and purple to get a more saturated blue color. And I'm gonna use this as like a shadow and as an accent color. And I'm not even gonna try to do wet into wet blending with this. If it's still wet, that's great. If not, that's fine. Houston is a swamp in disguise. Yes, it's like a con. It, so I have family that lives in Orange and we've been into Houston a few times. And I feel like, I feel like it's like a concrete swamp and super humid. I say that, but I like Houston though. Like, I don't mean it to sound like I don't like Houston. In fact, I was, I've been trying to talk Joseph into a trip to Houston because y'all have different comic stores. And I'd also like to go to, I think Austin has the, um, oh, it's like this chain of plazas that have like the Kino Cunias and the H Mart sometimes and the like <laughs> Asian book and art supply stores and the Daisos. Um, it starts with an M and I can't remember Mitsuya market. There we go. I think Austin has a Mitsuya market. It's not the only reason why I want to go, but it's definitely a reason why I want to go. I'm kind of surprised Houston isn't big enough for a Mitsuya market. It probably is. And, uh, the development just hasn't, hasn't happened yet. I wish New Orleans was, but somehow I don't necessarily see a Mitsuya market happening and maybe we'd get an H Mart, but for those kind of stores, it's more mom and pop stuff tends to do a bit better here. I don't even go to the comic book stores here. I, yeah, I haven't been, which is a shame. Um, I know Crescent city comics is great. I've been there a few times. Um, to be fair, some of the comic shop, many of the comic shops in Metairie are the comic shops I grew up going to as a girl. And they were very rude and misogynistic when I was a girl. So it's hard for me to be like, yeah, I want to go into this cramped comic book shop full of long boxes so they can be rude, at, rude to me again. I'm more thinking like, um, oh, it's this comic shop in Metairie by David's Art Supply, like B&E Comics. It just looks like it hasn't changed in 20 years. But Crescent City Comics is great. The only problem is just getting down to its uh, location. Ah, oh, so lucky. Couple H Marts and a 99 Ranch and I think two Daiso. And that's in Houston? That's enough to get me to go. Two Daisos? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I love Daiso. My, my love of five below is just an extension of like not having a Daiso. I feel like, I feel like if that is the case, it's going to be like the living embodiment of the McDonald's meme where, <laughs> where you have the kids in the car and uh you have like one of three options we have food at home we have food at home but you go to mcdonald's anyway or yay mcdonald's from the responsible parent and i i feel like joseph's gonna be like but you have a five below at home and i'll be like but 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 daiso <laughs> i love daiso so much i love daiso is stupid <laughs> 
I want to bring my mom to Daiso because she's like a Dollar Tree aficionado and I think she would appreciate Daiso. I hope it's a Daiso. I hope one of them is a Daiso with a good uh, kitchen section. When I was studying in Taiwan, I used to visit the Daiso all the time. I miss the Daiso. Yes. Hey, Indy, good evening. Oh, Daiso. Good for art supplies. Good for makeup. Honestly, budget makeup. Good for, like, home goods on a budget. Good for convention table stuff. Wish I could draw Loki as a Lilliputian. Ah, maybe so. Maybe at some point. I'm trying to finish up. I have so many flowers to paint. Uh, I'm trying to finish doing all the flowers before I do another request stream, but I'll definitely keep in mind that there is a growing, growing request for request streams. Joseph's been kind of kicking the tires on the idea that july 1st could be seven inch care day and that we could do like some kind of online mostly events for that and that could be a good day for like a, a draw your faves as the little fusions as a stream Okay. Not, not. Just remember that and remind me when we do a request stream because I will forget because lately my brain has been pudding. Even with my planner, my brain has been a little bit pudding like. And not in a Harley Quinn pudding way, but in like a. <laughs> <laughs> regrettably putting wet putting left in the sun okay mm, i don't know how i feel about those flowers what you guys also have a kino kuni yeah i need to man we need to make the trip Okay, so this is looking a little bit like too rigid, a little coloring book for me. So, so actually, no, I want to try and get some yellow back on these leaves. And then I will start a fight with my water bottle and spritz it and see what happens. Now, one of the nice things about some of these cooler, more opaque yellows is that you can actually really layer on which I like. Yes. Yes, it's all the kitchen stuff. That's that's where I'm sold. I am a I mean, art supply gadgets are definitely a sucker point for me, but kitchen gadgets are also a sucker point for me. Strawberry topper? I hardly ever eat strawberries, but sure, I'll buy a strawberry topper. Okay, so now I'm gonna spritz this with water and try to get this kind of blooming into the background a bit. I don't know how successful that's gonna be, but right now it's looking kind of static. And as someone who's easily bored, can't have that. I'm also gonna just make a mess. Why not? It's a Friday night and this is, this is what I consider getting wild.
All those alien eyes you've been working on have been coming out really nice, Indy. And a little bit of yellow. It's hard because I don't want to get, I end up getting it all over everything, but I don't want it to get all over everything. Well, if we get that house, fingers crossed, you will have an entire counter to make bread. Okay, I like some of this movement. Okay. <laughs> if you can make your flowers look like a coloring book, I envy you. I get where you're coming from with that. Um, I get that. Um, for me, I also like... <laughs> I like making a mess too. So sometimes it's fun for me to like make some chaos and then clean it up. You know what I mean? Oh, ain't nothing wrong with a weird brain. That's a creative brain. Need to use some of the art supplies I have here and stop buying more. Gosh, that's a tattoo. We all, <laughs> we all need that tattooed on us. But they all look so fun. So many fun toys. Okay, so this is super duper wet. There's just like nothing I can do on it for right now. Um, but, you know, with the fan going, it did dry in five minutes last time. So I'm kind of thinking, what time is it? We could take another break, give it a chance to dry a little bit. And then I'm hoping I can just go in Oh, maybe I should be awful and do, I say awful. It's not actually awful. It's just, I probably will regret it. Do some purple in the centers of some of them. Oh, I don't know. Impulsivity at work. But in a way that can sometimes be really good because it does lead you to try new things. don't want to do too much just some hints of it here and there I guess what I mean to say is I don't want it to be too neat and tidy it's okay to have that sometimes but it's often more exciting to look at, look at if I can get a little weird with it. Like even though this rose doesn't look anything like the reference, I really, I, my brain is really digging how the reds, the yellows and the blues are all kind of vibing off each other. It's just, it feels satisfying to look at. And while this one is probably not necessarily going to hit the same vibe as that, it's nice to have some like, like, I like how some of these colors kind of exploding into the background create this satisfying to look at sort of bloom. And of course, with your art, you can take as many or as few risks as you personally want to take. Like, I'm not trying to force anybody to make art that they are not comfortable with. Okay, so I'm, I grabbed some of that sort of cool phthalo -y blue, even though this is still wet. I'm also going to add that, get some definition going. One thing though, good or bad, if you have a collection of something and you complete it, there's something just so satisfying to the brain about looking at like a series of images that are completed. Oh, 
know. Honestly, I do not really care if it's realistic. So I'm there with you. Uh, my art is, my the way I draw is always too cartoony, even when I'm going more realistic. So, you know, I, hmm, how do I put it? I think I'm looking for like a good facsimile of life, but not an exact copy of life. Which in that case, I should probably go weirder. Yeah, you'd like it if they started growing arms, legs, and eyeballs. You would be, you'd be like, yeah, those are some interesting looking flowers there. Hey girl, I bet I can tell you where you got them seeds at. Did you have fun drawing it too? Because that's the best when, when you enjoy what you've done, even if it doesn't necessarily turn out like what you had in mind or the best you could ever draw. If you had fun drawing it, that's the best. Oh boy, I, I get you with that. I have made so many muddy messes. So many muddy messes. Some, I mean, and then there are days where you do everything right. And for some reason, the paints don't want to stay on the paper. They want to come up every time you run a brush over them. <laughs> the flowers grew body parts. But then I have to feed them. Okay, so... Um, Cindy, if you want some pretty basic tips on successful, not all the time layering, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to do it. I can also do a tutorial where I like share my tips for getting layering on cellulose and on cotton rag paper. Actually, I'll go ahead and make a note of that because I have been wanting to do some more um, short watercolor tutorials again, like just kind of covering some simple topics. And that could be a good one. Sorry, I guess you guys can see my, my Discord window. Let me, let me fix that. Yeah. I send myself notes all the time so that I can theoretically remember them. I did! All right, so I am going to go ahead and take that five-minute break I talked about because this is still really wet, and I want to go in with white wash after, and then I am pretty sure I'm just going to call this one done after that. So I want... My watercolor to be dry for that. Um, I'm also going to use it as a chance to refresh my water. We have blue Kool-Aid, so it's time for some new water. So um, I recommend you get up, you stretch. If you want, get a snack, get yourself some water, or some tea, go to the bathroom. I'll be back in around five minutes. So you've got at least five minutes. Wait, why am I doing that? No. No, Becca, no. Why are you bringing up this board? OBS.
Yep, I'm back. Mostly just went and got some water and I wanted to give this at least, I mean, it's still wet, <laughs> but I wanted to give it a chance to kind of dry out a little bit. <sighs> so in general, these streams, even even on like really nice dry nights, it's I should allocate, ooh, 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 no, 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 about two hours. Which I think honestly is a fair assessment for painting flowers. In general, it usually takes me about two hours to do that. So I've got here some white gouache, which is just an opaque watercolor. And I'm hoping this will kind of help adjust because a lot of this got kind of lost with all the the wet and the wet bleeding into itself and me spritzing it with water. So definitely one piece of arty advice that I have is that if you feel like you have art block and you can't think of something to draw or to paint, I find drawing something from reference and there are sites that will like just randomly pick something for you to draw is a great way to kind of scratch that drawing itch that need to create something or to keep my hands busy without me having to you know sit there and think hmm what do I want to draw today and it's also good to stay in study stay in practice which is something I've kind of fallen out of habit with and I need to get back on that horse we did um, some still lifes to start out with, with Art Squad on Thursday. And it just really reminded me of how much I kind of enjoy still lifes. I mean, um, there is this manga, Blue Period, and they do a really excellent job of explaining why doing still lifes, not just for your portfolio getting into art school, but as part of your regular art practice, is just a really good idea. And I mean, if you're an, an art nerd like I am, then, you know, you might enjoy Blue Period. A really enjoyable story about this high school guy who just kind of falls in love with art. He wasn't planning on anything like that. He was going to kind of, quote unquote, take the safe road in life. This wasn't really how he saw himself, but he just fell in love and he couldn't resist it. And that's very similar to what happened to me. Especially because, like him, I knew I probably wasn't good enough. I probably did not have the natural talent, but I just couldn't resist it. And at the time, I was willing to sacrifice almost anything, do almost anything, to chase that dream. Ooh, what to oh ooh. so Dawn said there's an app that's free it's called what to draw and it gives free art prompts that could be fun to try for a while especially because I when I'm burnt out I find myself drawing the same kinds of things over and over and over again there was a time I was using one of the character design generator services, whatever, websites to uh, <laughs> suggest characters for me to design. But I want to get back into doing regular figure drawing practice because I've definitely fallen out of doing that. And I used to spend um, 15 minutes every day warming up by drawing people from reference. And I definitely feel like my art ability, while it hasn't necessarily regressed, it hasn't made as much progress as I would like it to. And I think doing those kind of figure studies would be really beneficial. It's just, I don't know, I'm having a hard time doing it because lately I've been having a hard time kind of just sitting still.
So basically what I'm doing is I'm just kind of outlining some of the petals of the flowers, basically adding like some rim light to them just to hopefully, and not all of them either, just to kind of get them to pop out a little bit. I'm so sorry. I know, I know these eight o'clock streams, I'm always like a few minutes late. I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm so sorry. I don't like being late. It, I, it, it's something that actually really kind of bothers me when I'm late, but I appreciate you guys being, being patient with me. I do wish there was a button I could just push to have like my my streaming setup just pop up magically for me. Maybe in the next house I can have like a workstation that's just always, always has that camera set up and that would at least save me a little bit of time. You do professional streamers, it can take them like an hour to get everything set up. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I believe it, but like, dang. Um, and they're not changing their setup constantly either. Like they're leaked because that's what they do. Does he know it's going to be, does he like have an idea of how long it's going to take him or it yeah. just kind of takes him by surprise because some things are just. He knows sometimes it'll take like two hours depending on what he's trying to do. I mean, he's got much, a much more advanced setup. Than yeah. Him. Well, I mean, he, his content is more reliant on that. On having like a sophisticated streaming setup. Uh, ba, ba, ba. New Masters Academy that gives figure drawing sessions with two minute poses. Uh, Indy asked how much longer I am basically wrapping this up. So I know it's been a while. So maybe 10 minutes at the longest. Um, and then Dawn mentioned New Masters Academy that gives figure drawing sessions with two minute poses. It is hard to get away from the comfort zone. Yeah, that's so the the whole like drawing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, that was a trap I fell into. I and I still fall into it, but it was like a trap that really trapped me when I was younger. So one of the art pieces of advice that I really don't necessarily resonate with is the just draw. You'll get better. It doesn't matter what you draw. Just draw. Just draw a comic. You'll naturally get better. Drawing comics force you to draw all these different things. Just draw. And while I'm like very pro, like if you want to make a comic, don't wait for the day you're quote unquote good enough. Just go ahead and get started. Um, my own artistic journey taught me that quote unquote just drawing doesn't necessarily force you to improve because when I was in high school and under and in undergraduate, I drew every day. Um, I drew comics every day. I drew all kinds of different things every day and my art wasn't improving at all. And I think some people can do more self-directed improvement. I have students who are incredible artists for their ages they're they're good artists period but like when you think about their ages you're like dang they're really good and i know a lot of that has been self-directed for them and to be fair to young beck um there are resources available now that were just not there when i was learning how to draw but me drawing what i liked and what was in my comfort zone while it made drawing every day a joy, I never resented it. I never regretted it. I wasn't improving. So to me, I would definitely say, yeah, if you want to draw a comic, start that comic. You will improve as you go along. But I would also caveat that with like, take art education, um, take like community ed art classes if they're available. Uh, take online art classes if they're available. You know, do figure drawing studies, learn um, 
volumetric construction. I mean, the reason I bring it up is because I do see it pop up a lot. And it's like, I mean, that's good advice for some people. But if you're like me, then it's gonna, you're gonna stagnate for 15 years and not understand why you're following the advice that, you know, your favorite artist gave you, but it's not working for you. I mean, my art didn't start improving until I discovered the Glenville Poo drawing manual. And then I, and I started like reading along and doing the exercises along with the book. And it really taught me a new way to see the world around me. And that's when my art started to actually improve. And I think there might be some quote unquote magic key for every artist. And maybe some artists find it on their own and some artists have to search for it. I mean, sometimes it could be having a really, really supportive art teacher um, who can share resources with you and share advice and techniques with you. Sometimes it's having a really supportive group of friends who are willing to give you feedback on your work, even if you don't always like what they have to say, they're honest with you and you can trust them. Um, sometimes it is having a summer where you can just sink massive amounts of time into drawing every day. It's going to be different for every artist. And uh, Polly says, trying a different thing besides drawing can help too. Yep, I definitely agree with that. That's why I've been doing the chill streams because it lets me play around with different crafts and that kind of reinvigorates me. Mm. Drawing with a purpose really helps, yeah. If you're specifically setting out to achieve a particular goal, then you are more able to self-critique how successful you were in achieving that goal. All right, so this is just about done. It's a little bit messier than um, some of its brethren, but that can be fun. It's fun to try different things. Uh, I'm looking around to see if I can find my Pigma FB. Uh, you don't have to do this. I like going back in sometimes and re-inking it because it just helps me clarify things. But other than that, we are basically done with this hyacinth. I really enjoyed hanging out with you guys tonight. I appreciate your patience with me with the later start. Um, I don't want to like put the blame on somebody else. My mom was over and she stayed to have dinner and she did leave before eight. But she left at like 7.59 and I told her that was fine. I was enjoying seeing her. So like, you know, no regrets. But that was part of why I was a little bit later. So I appreciate y'all's patience with me. And I really enjoy these Friday streams. Generally, I tell myself if I'm not too exhausted from the week, then I'll do a stream. But if I'm just feeling like if I'm not feeling well or if... Uh, the week just kind of knocked me for a loop or I got really bad news that week, then I'll probably end up canceling, understandably so. So that's why sometimes I wait until Friday to announce that I'm doing it. But you can generally count on me doing a flower stream every Friday. So I want to thank Joseph for hanging out helping me out, sharing the mini comic with you guys. If you are into comics, I hope you guys will check out Pungent Quest, especially if you like puns. It is full of them. Uh, I have no affiliation with Bing Costa, just a fan. And I think it'd be really cool for us to be able to share a different mini comic with you guys every week. Nice way to help fellow small creators, you know, because it can be really hard. As somebody who's self-published and representing your own work, it can be really hard to get the word out there about what you're working on. So I think it'd be cool to be able to share some great mini comics with you guys. And who knows, you might find out that you actually really like comics and you just never knew. That would be pretty cool too. So I'm just re-inking to add a little bit of clarity here and there because with the watercolors, some of the opacity in the watercolor covered up some of the line art, which kind of shifts the color balance a little bit. And I find that re-inking can kind of clean up some of the muddiness. 
So if you do inked work and you then paint over it and you ever feel like your work is kind of muddy, try re-inking it. You might find that it adds that vibrancy back. All right, I say that and then I'm like, oh, I want to add a black line back over there. There is no such thing as good enough, only, only acceptable. All right. Yeah, I think, I think re-inking parts of that really help reestablish that contrast. So, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with it. It's difficult to find that method that will just advance you. So yeah, I'm still searching it. Yeah. Especially if you don't have access to an art community, especially in person, it really just feels like just kind of feeling your way in the dark. You try something, you don't know if it works, you feel like it's working. You might give up on it or you might stick with something that everybody swears by, but it just doesn't work for you and it never quite works for you. So I, I definitely feel that. Uh, things happen and that's just life. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know how I made it to 35 and I'm just kind of learning that things. So growing up, I always figured things happen to other people and that's just life and that's acceptable. But for some reason, when it was me, I could never be good with it. You know what I mean? I always felt bad. And so I'm learning at 35, like things happen and that's okay. But uh, <laughs> I appreciate y'all's patience anyway. Yeah, thank you, Dawn. You can join my art, my Patreon for more tutorials. I appreciate that they are helpful. Also, if you guys ever have questions like about something specific, it can be drawing, it can be watercolor, please let me know. Um, ideally in the paint box, because that way I can keep track of everything. Um, I would definitely like to get back into making short tutorials, or not short, but like more basic tutorials on like just techniques again. So if you guys let me know what you're struggling with, what you want more info on, what you want to know more about, that would help me out a lot. And then I could make tutorials that are actually helpful to people instead of just reheating the same information that other artists are already sharing. So please do not hesitate to reach out to me about that. Sometimes it takes me a while to do it, but it doesn't mean I don't care or that I forgot or that it was a bad idea. It just takes a while. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Rose, we have a cultivated rose. We have a hyacinth, oh bless you. Next week we're doing a hydrangea and then we have a water lily, not a water lily, sorry, um, a day lily. And then here's where everyone groans because I have two more sheets of this. We have cherry blossoms, a Gerber daisy, a peony, a magnolia, daffodils, and a uh, morning glory. And the morning glory is covered in dewdrops. I'm looking forward to that one. That one's gonna be pretty cool. And then we have a pansy, we have azaleas, we have a passion flower, we have a sunflower, we have a, I think it's a marigold, and then we have snapdragons. So we have so many flowers, but I'm looking forward to it. I love flowers. And I am going to go ahead and drop a link to the paint box. Right. So, oh, um, and everybody in the paint box is also really encouraging and nice. Um, we are, we try to be a very encouraging art atmosphere. So while it's not a super big discord, 
um, it's a very friendly and kind Discord. So uh, there shouldn't, how do I phrase this? Um, you are very welcome to share your art. If anyone is ever rude to you, feel free to reach out to me and be like, hey, what's up with this? Because um, while we do try to give constructive criticism, the goal is constructive to build people up and to help people pursue the kind of art that they want to draw or paint or <laughs> create. Um, it's not just limited to 2D art. You know, if, you, if you're a baker and you make cakes and you want to share your cakes, we love to see your cakes. So anyway, um, I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, on Monday, we're doing a chill stream. I don't know what craft we're doing yet. I need to take photos of the potential crafts and uh, share them on, on Instagram and on YouTube so you guys can vote on what you want to see. But we will be doing a chill stream on Monday. And um, I will see you guys next Friday, hopefully, with our hydrangea watercolor. So have a wonderful evening. Stay safe and happy, guys. Bye. Thank you for a great stream. I had a lot of fun hanging out with y'all today.